Right guys, we're about to have a little Sunday fun day. We've got a project going on here. Alright guys, welcome to the channel. Today we've got a 1989 Cat D7G uh, ex-military dozer. Something I picked up probably, oh, a couple weeks ago. Got hauled in while I was down to auctions in uh, Florida, so I didn't get any footage of it coming in or getting unloaded. So this dozer is actually in op, so what that means, it's inoperative. Does not start, and I'll show you guys why on the other side. Um, our goal is today is maybe try to get it running or turned over or something like that so this thing come in the rain and cold and everything else so guys didn't get any footage of it coming off but it did just get uh, pretty much drug off the trailer and that's where it sits so you guys see the shop over there super nice warm day out today so I thought I'd take advantage of the uh, warm weather and uh, try to get this dude going out here so this is what we got we got a pile of parts that come in with this thing big old gaping holes up here so what they've done they've actually removed the uh, transmission charge pumps that supplies um, oil pressure to the transmission and stuff they removed that this covers been off here this is where the uh, suction strainer filter is um, all that stuff's gone for whatever reason and that big hole down there if you guys can see that that's where the starter goes so I'm not sure what they were trying to do here. Everything's unknown. Don't have any history on this. I'm guessing, I'm hoping that the starter went bad and they just um, pulled all this stuff out of the way. Now you can get that starter out without taking this stuff off. It's a pain. I've done it before. But we did try to turn the engine over. It does um, move. We'll put a pry bar there on the ring gear. So I do know the motor's not locked up. So that's a plus. So bad thing is we don't know whether the charge pump was bad transmission could be out of it um, it's all big gambled stuff that I take into account but uh, hopefully I get lucky but you never know hopefully it was just a bad starter and they took that stuff out of the way but worst case scenario it could be bad transmission they need to start it for something else and Rob did who knows so the bad part of this game is we've got to put it all back together and see what was going on hopefully it was just a bad starter if not um we'll see if the engine runs transmission may be out of it so there's a bunch of random parts laying all over that had transmission charge pump part and two pieces laying back here there's a bunch of bolts i got a fish out there yet too with the magnet laying around so this is actually just a gear pump these two gears turn together in this case here I don't know if you guys can see that they actually just turn and create uh, in between these gears is what creates your oil pressure so it's what they call a gear pump but anyway this thing's been sitting out in the elements for a few days so rather than to uh, try to rebuild this thing we've got a uh, new aftermarket charge pump here um, it's a good thing about Caterpillar these older machines you can get parts for them aftermarket and stuff really cheap so do you have the cover off the suction filter Got a bunch more random parts slave cable laying there um, jump cable we've got a new starter from ITR we've got some uh, filters and other stuff from ITR in there I uh, got a new suction strainer and tube there I think you gotta get it all opened up and see so yeah we've got a fun little project so hopefully we can get it all back together and we're not missing any major parts because it is Sunday and nobody's open so um, kids are all busy practicing dirt bikes and didn't have nothing going on it was a nice warm day and I've been gone out trucking at auction so I thought I'd come over and take advantage of the pretty day so I think first thing I'm gonna do is grab a magnet and try to fish the rest of the bolts out up there I don't know whose bright idea it was just to throw bolts in here we got this nice uh, toolbox we didn't put no parts in it Instead, we just throw them up in here. That's a 12 point starter bolt. There's another starter bolt. Put 
have made it a lot easier just to put all the bolts in the toolbox. Well, got some logs in here. I guess about all the bolts we're going to find for now. Looks like we are missing one starter bolt, but I got more bolts in there, so that's not a big deal. Put that there with the rest of our mysterious pile of bolts. Maybe we can see what's going on. Try to get some stuff laid out here. Alright, I think the first thing we need to do is try to get a starter put back on it down there in that hole. Um, this is actually an aftermarket starter from ITR. You guys may be familiar with ITR. They actually are big into the undercarriage. We're a dealer for them. But what a lot of people don't know is they have a lot of aftermarket parts, whether it's hydraulic pumps, starters. I mean, I've got complete uh, uh, 3306 engine blocks for dozers like these. They have a lot of engine parts, all kinds of stuff. So, you guys got a part number? Good chance are we can find something aftermarket. And this thing's not light by no means either. Not light. So. thing is to make sure it's clocked right you guys know what that means but basically clocked is the orientation of this starter nose to the starter solenoid so you see these other holes here you can actually can move this starter nose around sometimes you put these on this may be hitting the engine block or something else you can pull these screws out reclock this nose where it's out of the way so um, I'm gonna get that dude up there and see if it looks like it's remotely close all right, hopefully you guys can see down there. Them holes are a little bit crusty and rusty. So I think what I'm gonna do first is uh, get me a U-joint from Impact. We're gonna run those bolts in there and uh, clean those holes out a little bit because it's a pain to get to those starter bolts and I don't wanna crank on them with the tool if I don't have to very far. So just not fun it's in a tight place down there so we're gonna run these bolts in here kind of clean those holes out hopefully it make life a little easier on us a lot easier to fight it now with a big old 60 or 70 pound starter in the way Alright, let's see if we can get this dude up in there. You guys may have to help me lift this thing, it's heavy. Oh. Let me see, I put a little bit of silicone on that gasket down there as I don't have a new one. The reason is, those um, torque, that's a transmission torque converter in there. I'm pretty sure the housing is wet on these, which means there's oil that's uh, running on the uh, inside of that housing. So, we don't want the uh, oil to leak out. Let's see if we can get this dude down in there without smashing some fingers. All right, 
in a bolt or two in there. So one of these bolts, I don't have a 12-point uh, bolt. Just got a regular 5 8 bolt, 15 16 head. Pretty sure there's enough clearance. We can get a thin socket or something on there. If not, we'll do something else. But I'm going to leave that one bolt up top there where we can get to it easy. So Hopefully, you guys can see the sun went in. Good times. Alright, I'm going to get uh, other bolts in there and then uh, we'll try to figure out where the wires go. Alright, got the starter all bolted up. I'm going to try to get you guys in there where you can see what's going on. We got uh, on the end of this starter here is actually the ground terminal. So, being I didn't have this apart, I'm trying to guess where everything went. But I've had these apart in the past, it's just been a few days. So, I've had motors out of them and rebuild them. And, but you forget things when you go to sleep. I do know these are all grounds because they're hooked to the uh, engine and the frame of the dozer. I guess that's all that goes on there. <coughs> Course, nothing wants to bend right there we go let's see if we can't tighten that up I had to get a socket on that it's a whole whopper draw Let's see, I got, uh, I know that's our battery cable lead, and this is probably power for the dash. This little bitty one's probably the starter exciter wire for the key switch. I think I'll put it on first. Fairly simple. It's a nice thing about these old dozers, that's why everybody loves them. They're simple, no computers. This is one of the better tractors that Caterpillar built back in the day. Good old solid dozer. They're like 200 horsepower. And they're like 45,000 out of Ripper with the Ripper they're around 51 or so. Basically the same size as the 850J John Deere's that we mess with a lot. It's actually the 850J is what replaced these in the uh, United States Marine Corps. Respect up the same so. It helps if you go the right way. And be careful, you don't want to tighten these too tight, they just got to be snug. Alright, got that on there. Now we'll put our main power wire on there from our batteries. I'm guessing that one's power for the gauges and everything. Trying to see if we got any more wires. I know this one goes to the jump start receptacle. Just the ground. Um, I think that's it. I don't see anything else laying around here. That's the fun part about working on something that you didn't take apart. Keep it exciting anyway. A little windy today. Hopefully that don't mess up the mic I'm wearing too bad. I don't know. It's all new to me. Yeah, one thing you don't want to do, you don't want to let this terminal inside here spins it's like soldered on it's a very fragile joint so you never want to tighten those up too tight and if you do 
go to take these off hold that that uh, inner nut with another wrench to save yourself a lot of headache and an expensive starter and I will tell you that starter is not cheap I want to finish getting this ground wire hooked up and then we'll uh, move on up to the uh, transmission charge pump all right got those wires all on I'm gonna clean up this uh, surface where the charge pump goes on We got uh, our new and old charge pump laid out here. Looks like we got to swap over a couple, uh, couple fittings and lines here. We'll do one at a time. So we find some new O-rings. So if this thing does run, I'm going to have to uh, change the filters and fluids and stuff. I've probably got some... Probably got some water down in the transmission, so what we'll do before we even start it, I'll probably go down below and uh, pop the drain plug on the transmission to see if there's any water down in there. Because this thing's not been running or moving for a... Uh, few weeks now so if there is any water it should have separated from the oil water's ever in oil it should have been in the bottom so. that all sounds good in theory anyway clean this out a little bit We'll have to take this tractor out and run it and make sure that's all right. Put some hours on it and stuff since it's all been tore apart and sitting and everything. So, let's see if we can find some new O rings over here. Looks like them. Oh yeah, thing of beauty. All right, now I wasn't paying no attention. Which way did it come off? Or you guys are supposed to have been watching me? Went just like that, didn't it? All right, get this one put on there. Um, so we're we gonna take bets on if this thing's gonna run at the end of the video or not. You guys, place your bets in the comments down below if it's gonna run or not. And like I said, the motor does turn over. That's about all I know about it. I'll leave a comment below if it's going to run or not. I'm pretty optimistic, so. We'll try our hardest to make it run today anyway. That might help you out. Alright. That suction tube on there. Take this one off. Like I said, I probably could have uh, resealed that problem is those gears if you don't put them back in the same spot that they come out of you don't know uh, the orientation of them because somebody else had them all apart so it's playing it safe and bought a complete new pump and to eliminate that problem if that was a problem to begin with so we don't know
Somebody's been uh, in here. I think what I want to do is take this off, replace this O-ring anyway. Let's who knows what's been going on with it. Hopefully that went on there like that. Guys are watching when you get another O-ring. That thing is hard. I don't know if you guys can see that O-ring. It's like flattened out. It's supposed to be round. If you guys can see. Probably hard to see. Anyway, we got a new one in there. That thing's hard too. Frogs are hollering. It was like 75 degrees yesterday in the first week of March. It's crazy for Indiana. It's supposed to get cold again though. O-ring there, I think the only thing we got left. I don't know what this big old long bolt's for. That's interesting. Just decided that was a good place to uh, plug a hole off or what? Looks like we got a little fitting here we gotta replace. Grab a wrench. Or swap out I guess. you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm not paying attention. Alright, got this fitting here. It's clocked down this way, kind of pointing right towards this bolt. So we'll put it in the same place maybe. If it was even in the right place to begin with. So who knows, I didn't take this apart. Always fun trying to figure out what somebody else did. Happens a lot of the stuff I buy from the government and it's been taken apart. That's the right wrench for that. Pointed right at that bolt. Tighten this jam nut down. Okay. That is that. I wonder if we can get to that hose easier. I need to go ahead and maybe put it on loosely. Might be a smart thing to do. I'm going to see where it goes real quick. I'll be right back. I think I can get to that one after the fact. It's not too big a deal. We'll leave that one out of there. Okay. I think we're about ready to mount this dude on the engine up there. Looks like we got an O ring here. I believe that was. Nope. There's an old one laying up here. Must have been that one. I did order a couple from ITR just because I had the part number handy. 
ITR's got a lot of aftermarket stuff. Like I said, these come from ITR, so looks like the same thing. One there, well, it's got some cardboard crap in. I'm gonna clean that out and uh, put that on there. So, if you guys watch, uh, um, Chris from Let's Dig uh, 18, he's got a 977, which is kind of based off his same tractor. You guys watch his, you know, he's getting a little bit of, uh, well, a lot of transmission oil is pushing in through his um, engine. So there's only a couple ways it can get there. This seal right here runs in that torque converter housing, which can fill out, overfill that, and pressurize that housing up and send oil back into the engine. So I think he's already replaced that, pretty sure, to eliminate that issue. So about the only other issue could be the uh, rear main seals um, bypassing and sending oil up into the engine. So a lot of things to consider on stuff like that. So All right, we'll get her. that's not the right O-ring. Here we go. It's back here. Get that stuck in there. I think we'll be ready to mount it up. I'm going to try to find the bolts and I'll move you guys. All right, I think I found some bolts here, three-eighths bolts. Sprayed some car oil and threads that somebody sent us. These may be a little bit long. Clean these holes out here. Yeah, those bolts are a little bit long. Find some shorter ones and get the holes cleaned out here anyway. Yep. These holes aren't very deep at all. This looks more like it, maybe. Yeah. Maybe something in between here, maybe. Always a good time trying to figure out what goes where. I know that pump's got about a three-eighths of a yeah those should work fine pump's got about a three-eighths uh, thickness to it so those should work good there a little more lube in the holes a little bit there where the o-ring goes all right I'm gonna put some in that drive coupling to help things out all right I'm gonna grab the pump Nothing's light on these things. We built these things to last. Alright. I think this dude, I got that O-ring in there. Just out smashing my fingers. started she started oh, got the wrong bolts it's funny it's got two little bolts holding that dude in there it's got some dowels it lines up on hold up even where'd that one go way over there Looks beautiful. There's that hose over there. We can still get to it. I think we better put the uh, hook his suction stringer up here next. Get some bolts for it. And these are going to be longer, I can tell you. Yeah. Careful with these. This is aluminum housing we're threading into here. I'm gonna over torque them. I'm 
grab a 916 ratchet wrench and tighten those up. Beautiful. All right. Mm, mud dauber's been in these holes over here. I'm gonna clean those out. Grab a little screwdriver. It's always something. Tells me this tractor was probably taken apart back when it was warm out, cause this thing come from up north of me. I mean, she's probably been sitting open for a little while. I'm going to go ahead and chase these threads out with the bolt. Make sure everything's easy peasy. Now, I'm ready for this hose. I thought we took off that other pipe there earlier. We'll kind of get this harder end in here. Yeah, that's good times. Big old stiff hose. Not going to cooperate. Maybe you guys so I can get down in there. I'll get those bolts in there and then uh, I'll get her tightened down. We'll be back. All right, we got that uh, hose tightened up. You guys probably can see I've got something going on here. So we run out of these uh, half clamps here. They're lost, gone, or something. So I've got one on here and I've got one bolt holding it. Fortunately, I got one more hose to put on here. I'm going to try to. Uh, Gonna try to put it on there with some bolts and washers and hold it temporary for now. That's not super high pressure. It's just out of the transmission filter. So we're not holding super high hydraulic pressure. It's probably only like 250, 300 pounds at most. Shouldn't be much going through that filter housing. So I'm hoping with the O-ring, putting four bolts on there, that's gonna hold. I could cut something out in the plasma table and do it, but it is Sunday and I'm in a hurry. So we'll just order I've got some of those clamps, but I got them in an X size bigger, which doesn't help me, unfortunately. So we'll just order some Monday. Hopefully, the four bolts will fix that. Next thing we're going to do before we put this hose down here in the way, we're going to get these filters opened up that we're missing. Um, should be two types of filters. There are two filters in there. One is just basically a screen. I think the other one's actually got magnets in it. See what uh, what we got here. I think I actually bought this on eBay from a uh, viewer that actually watches our channel. So appreciate that. Found it a little cheaper than I could. It's a cat product, but I found it cheaper than I could at cat. So guy actually put in the comments he loves our channel. So anyway, that's pretty cool. I don't know where it come from. QP distribution. Anyway, that's the magnetic part that should go inside of this part here. I hope. I'd say all this stuff was missing. I don't know where it's at. Probably find it all one day. Just like those clamps are probably laying somewhere or they've blowed out to sea. It's hard telling. So basically what this filter is, it's just a suction strainer filter. It's catching up all the uh, nasty stuff before it goes to that new charge pump we put on. So the magnets, are, mag magnets I can't even talk, are going to catch all the big chunks and the particles. And then uh, the screen's going to do a job of catching other stuff before it goes in the transmission charge pump. And then there's also another uh, filter 
transmission filter and another housing that gets out the super fine stuff so it goes on there like that sets down in the housing this is actually the lid for it I actually found that it drops down in there just like so yep. should go on there like that and clean that up get that all put on there I am missing a freaking spring here too I just got the Pretty sure there should be a spring on top of this plate holding that down. Get out my little parts book here. It's always something. I may have to improvise with that right now and see my brand new parts book here. Oh. I'm going to try to find that. I'm pretty sure there's a spring on here. I'll find it all the uh, right back here all right found our diagram here um, can't see it there's a cutaway there but number four right there it's actually called a spring washer and I remember it so I'm gonna have to get one of those I think right now I'm gonna find something temporary to hold that down because we're not gonna run it very long here just to make sure it is pushed down so it uh, catches anything that's coming through there so I want to take a picture of this part so uh part number so i got oh maybe freaking win i'm gonna get a picture of this and then uh i'm gonna have to put you guys down and do that how about that i'm gonna get a picture of this so i don't know what to order monday also need to find a part number for those clamps in here but uh we're not worried about you know, all right there's those clamps while we're here i'll get a picture of that too they we're not super worried about that right now look 16 through 12 bolt and flange 1p477 boy it's windy all right got a picture of that find those parts probably monday and whatever else we need it all right i'm gonna go try to find something to uh kind of Hold this down that spring. That spring. I get that back down in there. Anyway, it sits on here and kind of pushes down on all this light pressure. I'm gonna go see what I got to put that and hold that in there for right now. Yeah, it sits right in there and pushes that down so can't be too too tall. I'll go find something. Alright. I got something it's not the best thing but it will work i believe so we're just trying to keep a little bit of pressure down on this uh, filter so i've got a big old thick o-ring in here it's going to put a little bit of pressure but it's going to squish so it don't collapse that so i think i gotta get a spy for right now shouldn't uh shouldn't affect anything so you guys are notice we're missing a stud there i got a new stud from the lawson cabinet in there i'm gonna put a little bit of lube on there and uh, try to get that in there. I'll get you guys set up and we'll put this together. All right. Stud's a little bit longer than the other ones, but it doesn't matter. So, got that all cleaned up. Flip it over. Some new hard work because, of course, the other stuff's all gone. Let me have you guys in the way here. Uh-oh, that lost you. Trying to get that close action shot. All right. I think the last thing we got here in this equation is this uh, other rigged up setup I'm going to have to do here. It's going to be good too.
hopefully it will get us by enough to run it see what we've got we're just trying to get this dude to fire up see if it's got good bones to it I guess sometimes you get lucky sometimes you don't so Yeah, that looks good, right? Surely that'll hold her. I mean, it's not high pressure. I'm not super worried about it. Let me know what you guys think. It's just low pressure anyway on the transmission filter. All right. I think that's about it down here. I just went to the jump start receptacle. That's just a ground. Not important. Probably should pull that transmission filter out and see what it looks like. I've got new ones, but I've got one still good enough to run a little bit. We'll uh, try that first. I'll grab a three-quarter socket. Let's see what's under. Hmm. I hope I got a three-quarter socket, huh? Instead of 13 sixteenths. Can't see today, I guess. Oh yeah, she's not going to give up. There we go. A Fram filter, who does that? That well, looks pretty decent yet. I'm not going to bother changing that we'll put that right back together at least we know what's going on in there like I say after we run it and get uh, good and warm if it does move we'll drain that out and change those another day I think we're about ready to start checking fluids see if we got fuel up in this dude and uh, all that good stuff and maybe it will start all right we're back up top here you guys can see we're missing something here might be a radiator cap missing sure that was on there when I bought it. Somebody's probably stole it off while it was sitting on the army base or wherever. I do see the pitcocks open on the drain tube down there so that's good that we don't have uh, hopefully any water down in there. I'll just leave that open for now. So we got water in there and it froze and busted. That would not be a good thing for sure at all. Let me check the engine oil here. There's another Fram filter. I like Fram filters in there. About a quarter inch over full. It's better not having oil. Nice and dirty. The way we like it, isn't it? Alright. Got the air filter uh, securely fastened here too. That's lovely. It's just getting better and better here, isn't it? Probably needed that bolt for another one. That's some good wire. Oh yeah. Let's see what kind of wild America we got inside here.
good enough to run. Let me just leave that out for now and just leave that inner one in there just to see if it runs. Alright. I'm going to check and make sure there's some transmission oil in it. Color cool. I'll take you guys up here. It's all looking somewhat good. Kinda. Guess what your definition of good is? This sounds empty. I'm drying a bone. This is what you want to see on a Sunday. Yeah, well, there's the 10% mark, and we're uh, not even showing on the stick. Just a little bit down there. At least the tank's all clean and ain't all rusty. That's always a plus. I probably should go down and see if the uh, shut off valve is open on the tank. Hell, they could have run out of fuel and cranked on the starter and, and uh, cranked on it so much and burnt the starter up. You never know what these people do. Anyway, we got uh, 1,354 hours. I'd say those are original. It's pretty clean up here. Yeah, they could have run out of fuel and just kept cranking on the starter. Couldn't bleed it out and ruined the starter and chain of events. Who knows? It's like playing detective at these things. So I tried to figure out how to get the seat up here. There's a little lever down here somewhere. I remember. Oh, we got a fire extinguisher down in here. That's always good. You might need that after a bit. Parking brake lock. Come on, seat latch, where are you? I know you're here. Somebody's probably telling me right now where it's at. I can't hear him. Yeah. How about right here? Nope. Now that's it, it's just not working. It's stuck. All right, I'm gonna get something, get that seat latch uh, broke loose. All right, I've been fighting this stupid latch for like 10 minutes here. It's all freaking corroded up and crap. And rusty and not moving. And it's a good time. All I wanted to do is check the transmission oil. It is full. It's a little bit over full, but it's supposed to be checked with it uh, running. So I'd say that's good. It's not all dirty and black, so that's good. Taking a look down there, everything looks pretty good. All right, I'm about to get that seat fixed. I like to never got that fire extinguisher out of there. I don't know why they didn't have it in the bracket where it's supposed to be. Probably thought my keepers are broken. Anyway, that's a good time. Set these tools down. Check the hydraulic oil tank is full. It's always good. So I think. Ready to go get some fuel and put in this dude. Make sure the fuel drain shut off there. It shut off. Um, so when those guys uh, unload this thing off a trailer, I told them there's actually two brake bands in here. I actually told them to take these cover offs, back the brakes off, so uh, they could roll it off the trailer. So we'll have to adjust those back up too. But yeah, I think we're ready for some fuel. Got to figure something out with the battery situation over here because I don't have any of those big monsters batteries with me today. Might try to uh, hook them back up and put a jump pack on it and see what happens. I guess the Caterpillar disconnect key too. We'll be back. Alright, so I got some fuel in this truck and we'll pull it over there. Fuel her up. Cross her fingers. Hopefully, it might fire up.
I go. Oh, I wonder how much fuel we should put in her. Hook this battery cable up. Hopefully, we don't have no fires. Yo, cat, old style, two prong disconnect key. Make sure we don't have any fuel running out on the ground. That would not be good. It looks okay. Alright, that ought to be enough to get us going. I'm going to fill our plum up in case we got to uh, pull the tank to get to the tranny or something stupid like that. All right, guys. I had these uh, sermonic mics on. I just dropped a freaking camera, and it went. It, it fell down the ground about eight foot and busted my receiver. One, I think it won't work no more. So you guys probably not gonna be able to hear stuff quite as well. I don't know. I messed with it, messed with it, but it took a pretty good crash here on that one. These things are picking up the sound. It's just not sending into the GoPro. Anyway, we'll get through it. Probably just ruined a set of mics or receiver. Hopefully, I can buy that. Maybe buy that one separate. I don't know. We got bigger fish to fry, but it's windy. It's going to be hard to hear me. So, we got fuel in the tank. Got that filled up. And that's when I crashed my camera, hit it with the fuel hose. So, I think we need to go up here and uh, see if we can't bleed some fuel out. Or see if we got fuel up here. I believe that's going to be a bleeder screw there. Get a little wrench so if you guys watched um watched some of my earlier videos around christmas time i actually had a d7f and that was a series of tractor before this one and it had the uh similar motor in it this one's 200 horsepower instead of 180 so crack this and see if we got fuel coming up here or not Like I said, being that fuel tank was out of fuel kind of makes me suspicious that they were uh, running out of fuel. Maybe tried to crank on her. Who knows? We're going to thread this primer pump here and pump that up. You see those air bubbles coming out there? Let's see you guys up there. We're going to try to get. All those air bubbles out. Ooh, man, I got you guys. Diesels do not like air whatsoever. Throw some pig mats under here and catch that extra fuel. Sign. Who knows if the injection pumps dry or who knows? Well, the primer pump got good and stiff, so it means we got fuel. So if we get this dude running, we'll go through and service it and change all the filters and all that good stuff. Think we checked hydraulic transmission, engine oil, antifreeze, no cap, it's empty. Just can't run it very long. Um, I think we're ready to get some juice to this dude. I don't know if this thing will turn this over. These big old batteries are there completely dead it won't do anything all right get that hooked up 
Come get us. We'll see what uh, happens here. Fuel shut off's working. That was crazy. I didn't even hardly hit that thing. That is crazy. I don't know if you guys see, I didn't even have the camera success it runs that's a big relief guess now we need to uh, probably adjust those brakes back down I want to put that fuel cap back on can't believe that thing fired up that easy I had ether out and everything else it wants to cross it on me Good old cat, fuel cap. We'll put some car oil on her, how about that? Those old caps, never want to thread on right. All right, I'm gonna get that on there, there we go. And then uh, I think I'm going to go back here and tighten those brakes up. We'll get uh, this stuff off the tracks down here. And then uh, we'll fire it back up again. I don't want to run it very long there's no cooling in it. We'll fire it up again and uh, see if she moves. I'll cross your fingers on that. All right, so I crawled down here underneath the tractor. Something I forgot to do. Remember I told you it could be some water in the transmission. So you guys can see I loosened up that drain plug. You got to log up, up <laughs> log up in here anyway i loosened up his drain plug drain plug a little bit and we're draining water out hopefully when i start that it didn't uh, mix any of that crap up so i'm gonna kind of let that thing sit there and drip out slowly while we're uh, working on the brakes and stuff up there all right you just seen i was draining a little bit of water out of there about to uh, it quit running out there wasn't probably maybe a quart in there two quarts at the very most so you guys can see I pulled this brake cover off here um, and I don't remember what the adjustment is on these I know Wayne backed them off before he pulled it on the or pulled it off the trailer so I wasn't here I'm gonna tighten them up I don't remember I may have to get the book out you guys can hear that clicking over I'm going to tighten them up and back them off a half turn. I'm going to start with that. If they're too tight, I can back them off more. Too loose, I'll tighten them up another click. But It feels like it's about there. I'm sure somebody out there probably... Yeah, right there, she tightened up. Somebody knows exact uh you got a number of clicks or all right that's about a half turn off i'm gonna do the same thing over there to that side and then we'll try to fire up again and see what happens all right all right we got the brakes adjusted up i think get this air filter outer air filter off here don't need it for what we're doing we got the inner one yet 
Looks like the guy's got a chain tied up on the front of there. Let's see what that's all about. Let's see what that guy it looked like. I had a chain pulling it out off the trailer or something. Hopefully. We don't need a chain anymore. Time will tell on that part of it. We'll find out real shortly. All right. I think we're gonna try to fire this dude up again. My uh, clamp job's not leaking. All right. See what happens here. Pick up the ripper. Oh yeah, look at that. forklift I think we may have got lucky guys and gals it may have just been a starter you win some and lose some this one we might have won I hate to say that yet I shouldn't have said that I'm gonna move this forklift and then we will try it out real quick maybe come on Nissan I used this to carry the toolbox out earlier got half the shop out here at least it's nice and warm all right I'm gonna fire up and uh, try her out I'm gonna set you guys up here and you can watch guys i'll call that a success i don't know if you've seen me running it much i wanted to get it over to the shop i didn't want to get it too warm because as you've seen there's no coolant in there so we got a bird's nest falling out that's where the water come out here it wasn't very much but anyway i got a big old mess to clean up that was pretty cool man the steering clutches and brakes are working perfect um couldn't ask for anything better so that's going to make somebody a good tractor i think but uh, we're gonna get some cooling in it and uh, look over some other stuff and run it. Get it warmed up during that transmission oil a couple times, change filters. Still lots to do on it, but probably gonna save that for uh, another day. I'm happy it just run, so I made my day. Run and worked and moved. Transmission felt good. These are strong, snappy old tractors, so definitely, definitely cool it's gonna make a good tractor i believe i get some batteries so i think that's about the end of this video 
I'm gonna get some parts ordered. We got we're missing a battery box lid. It's gone. Got to get a couple of those clamps, some other stuff. That spring inside that transmission uh, filter. I would have liked to run it around some more for you guys, but it doesn't have any coolant in it, and uh, I don't have a cap for it or anything else. So just kind of run over and parked it. But yeah, I think that's gonna make a cool machine. So. That's going to be it on this video. We may have another one coming out on this, uh, doing the rest of the stuff to it, a part two or something, but, and, uh, maybe take it out and run it a little bit, make sure everything's a hundred percent. We'll find a place to run it somewhere or do something. So guys liked what you seen, give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you said, uh, thought, uh, earlier in the video, whether it was going to run or not. See if you guessed right. That thing fired off. I mean, it didn't crank over a eighth of a turn that fired off. It surprised me wasn't even ready for it so good old cat fired up so i'm just happy transmission that so apparently the starter went out of it like we we're thinking they took that other stuff off and parked it and said it was no good and sold it to me i guess so but i bought them like that and uh transmissions out of motors locked up in them you know you win win some lose some so today we're winners but I'm sure there's going to be another one that's uh, not like that. You don't get lucky like that all the time. So anyway, guys, we'll catch you next time.